Vincent is humming. And Renair is laying right on top of his chest. Kind of crushing him. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But he's trying to wake him up slowly by carding a a hand through his hair. In an in-bedroom in the Sleepy Sheep, there is light music that fills the air. The curtains closed as in the darkness of the room you feel that reassuring weight on your chest that blanket of red hair and the slow rise of his chest he stirs to the humming and stretches slightly as he takes a deep intake of breath and smiles and plants kisses on your chest up your shoulder morning good morning (laughs) how'd you sleep well quite well Mm. um and, and you, you. Happy as a clam. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. He <laughs> says as he, um, as he just twiddles his thumbs a bit and just smiles so early in the morning so that your thoughts aren't there, but only having the emotion. We kind of move around the space moving through the different rooms um Adar are you in the room (laughs) (laughs) I can remember the original bed situation was that you're like in In the the same same room room as them she's on the couch she's on the couch you're on the couch (laughs) god (laughs) Ladar, how do you awake I guess a a better question would be how did you sleep after everything that happened the day before She probably was up really late by herself, like thinking a lot, but she feels very rested. She feels like she only got a couple hours of sleep, but even just that was enough to kind of like give her a little bit more life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The couch here at the Sleepy Sheep is quite comfortable. This is your resting place this night as you had not tossed and turned, but just laid awake um, for once, night pouring in through the windows instead of twilight. And as you awake from the few hours of rest you did get, you see on the coffee table in front of the couch that flower. Just laying there, illuminated by golden sunlight. She kind of picks it up and just kind of stares at it. Quizzically. (laughs) She's like, what's this? (laughs) She's just... But she has like a smile on her face, like, you know, kind of like warms her heart a little bit. She, like, remembers, you know, the day that they had with all of her friends. Oh, friends. Yeah. We see the... As daylight pours into the in-room, we shift over into Deville and Azram's room, where Alan is soundly asleep, though you could hear him sort of tossing and turning. Um... You share this room um, with Alana again as the other rooms that you had bought for allowing the Riders of Fate and Dresden to stay are, you know, all booked up now by other people that need to stay at this inn for uh, Lantern Night and such. <sighs> the curtains are open to you and you're sort of blinking awake as you feel the sunlight hit your face. Um, what do you do? 
Um, is Deville still like soundly asleep? Yeah, he's uh, soundly asleep on his side. Um, you know, at some point, uh, roll over to just kind of get his own space uh, and such. Azrim's gonna try to sneak out of the bedroom and cook breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Give me a stealth. <laughs> Can we roll stealth? Uh, stealth? Uh, sure. Yeah, go for it. Can't wait to fill up. 25. Damn. 25. Shit. Perception Shit. stealth. Perception. Okay. You tiptoe out of bed. Um, and as you do, uh, the door closes. Deville, his back tor- turned towards where you were, though, um, just kind of smiles a bit and then just lies his head back down as he rolled a 27. <laughs> <laughs> Natural 20. Oh Holy shit. Um, Azrim's going to sneak into the kitchen. He's going to start making breakfast. <laughs> Zadara just on the couch. Morning. Uh, <laughs> when he sees on the couch, he's going to bang around a little bit more. Uh, oh can you uh, make perception checks, both of you? Oh, please. No, not me. This isn't like an active, like you're searching around to see if something's just happening. Just general perception. This is just general perception. <laughs> I would say don't add reliable talent to this. Just, just passively looking. You could say your passive perception too, if you are, but honestly. Either way, it's a 22 for me. 22? Uh, 15. I didn't realize my passives went up, so my passive insight is 22 as well. Uh, wow. Azram, you kind of walk out into the living room and... Can't put your finger on it. Something's different. You're not entirely sure what it is, but something, there's something slightly off. But you just kind of trying to put it together in your head as you see Ladara sitting there staring at the flower, just kind of focusing on it, um, thinking to herself. Um, do you say anything? Uh, good morning. Oh, hey, yeah, good morning. What are you looking at? <laughs> oh, it's, it's just a flower. <laughs> you have a lot of those. You ever get, like, tired of all the fucking flowers around you all the time? Oh, well, it's a pretty new thing, I guess, so, um, I, you know, as long as I can control it more than that, there shouldn't be too many flowers, but this this was just from Auna. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, he, um, he just gave it to me last night. He did what? <laughs> he, what? Why are you looking at me like that? Azrim's gonna run back into the room. <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs> Move back into the room. Um, as Ladara, you are <laughs> on the edge of noticing something and are suddenly your attention is completely taken by the fact that Azram is right. all of a sudden like, whoa, and then he's gonna into the room. run in the room, but he still plans on making breakfast, so he does he's gonna pretend like he's gonna be like, I don't wanna wake up to Bill. So he's gonna like slam the door open, but then be like <laughs> and then he's gonna like tiptoe to Alan's bed and be like you did it! You did it! Shh, 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 Act cool. Act cool about it. You can see that there are bags under Alana's eyes as he's looking. He's like, what, what, what are you talking about? Ladara said you gave her a flower. Shh, shh, shh. I'm whispering. <laughs> are you listening to this, Ladara? <laughs> you can't hear it, but she just hears like the rustling and she's so, she's like, what is wrong with him? I, you said it was a good thing you said to do that. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm, I'm so surprised you actually did it. <gasps> you told me to do it. I mean, I mean, I wanted to do it, but you, I mean. Are you guys uh, all right? Was... What's, go- but Ladara, please, Deville is sleeping. Mm, not anymore. <laughs> As Deville kind of <laughs> rises up and stretches. Well then, could you see? Deville's eyes are fixated on the window. Oh no! <laughs> as sunlight pours in. <gasps> What, 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 is, what, is, what is going on? 
Um, Asm's running around for some reason. Uh, no, 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 no. Why? Why? He says as he looks outside of the window, and he just kind of opens the, like, half-dressed opens the window and sort of peeks his head out around. And as he opens these windows, you can see, you can hear down below the city streets that are usually bustling and frantic with morning energy in the twilight are quiet. What's going on? What, what's, what's wrong? What's going on? Have you not noticed? Light. Have you ever seen light the entire time that we've... No, you... you, you no, no, you wouldn't understand because last night was night, which comes around every lantern night, but light... Deville is kind of in like a, a state of confusion. Not panic, just, just, just confused as he's just looking through the windows and and trying to see what's happening everywhere. Um, I've never seen sunlight in this city. Like, ever? Ever. Why why is it here? I don't know. Well, that's why I'm confused, as as to why why is the sunshine? What is happening? Um, As Deville goes and starts, like, hurriedly putting on a shirt and, and like I have to I have, I have to check on something I have to go I have to go see what is this this seems not right for a number of reasons oh, do, do you want me to come with you I I, I, I don't know I don't know I, I, I'll handle it I'll, I'll I, I, not that I'll do anything about it I just I, I just need to know what's going on as the villa is kind of but what if it's like dangerous if it's dangerous, didn't we, didn't we talk about a buddy system, anyways? I'm, I'll be fine if it's dangerous. I, I, there's no one out there on the streets right now, right? That's what you said, right? There's, yeah, there's very few people out there in the streets, um, from what you can see. Um, not that it's like mm-hmm. barren, empty. There's nothing here. Go ahead and make like an intelligence check. I'd say, um, you probably heard the slam, Vincent, and then also like. The sounds of like Deville in sort of a pitched sort of state, if that makes sense. Mm. So you do hear this happening. You don't fully get the context of yeah. it. I think at first he's like, ah, it's probably just like antics, you know? Yeah. Silly antics. Is that intelligence? Intelligence. Okay. It's 10 for me. 12. 12. 12. Um, oh, I'd say intelligence or insight, I guess, is, oh, better. Cool. is, is better. 14. 14. 22. Uh, you look out and look and see that there's no people on the street, um, or very few people on the street, um, and you get the sense, as you would get the sense that this isn't normal, that this isn't like the post-lantern night, there's a post-lantern day where sunlight mm-hmm. is all of a sudden like shining throughout the city and, and like that sort of thing. But then, no, I'm saying, but then Ladara, you would put together a few kind of key facts, which is that... The majority of this city, a lot of them are people that have sunlight sensitivity to sunlight in some way, like mm-hmm. like Drow or Duragar. And so there's a lot of people that are probably inside of their homes because they the can't. sunlight is uncomfortable to them. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, this is not good. Um, and looking outside the window, you can see that this isn't like the sun is shining through the clouds. There is just light in the sky that is just oh god the sky itself is this like sickly yellowish color Uh and like light is just like pouring in (laughs) in in different areas around the city itself Deville is kind of hurriedly putting things on and is like I just need to check with some people I'm just gonna go down you can come if you want okay it's just I I need to I, I, I'm just confused. In, in all of my years of living in this city, I've never seen sunlight. Something is wrong. Well, we know who's in this city. It's not great people. Right? Yeah, they are. <laughs> so, it could be anyone. Let's just... Maybe it's not bad. Maybe 
maybe maybe it's just something I missed. Oh no, no. Cool. let's let's go figure it out. You see like the hurriedness as Alna is getting his shirt on and is like, well, well hold on. I, Are we all going or uh, um, and he kind of looks at you and then uh looks at way a little bit and then says <laughs> I, I, if it is something that's dangerous, then I, I'd like to at least be there just in case. Do we want to let and then the, you can, you know, make a perception make check. A little, with, yeah. Yeah, to kind of um, see if you can hear the conversation. Yeah. You said perception? Mm-hmm. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. You catch some words, and you can tell that, like, you know, no one is laughing and no one is, mm. there's no camaraderie in this. It just sounds kind of like a little bit like people are, like, worriedly talking, like, getting dressed and, like, stomping outside in the living room. Yeah. Uh, Renera would probably at some point be like, what is that? I think I think something may be wrong. Uh, <sighs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, right now. Not Do you one think day. we can sit this one out? Or... Uh, you know, I want to. <laughs> okay. And um, he begins to sort of get out of the bed uh, and get his clothes on yeah. to um, get started as you open the door to the living room and all of a sudden there's just bright light in oh the room. Oh my god. <sighs> Ooh, our like curtains were closed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, you're, is... you're awake. Good. Um, Hi. Says, uh, There's something going on. We have a problem. I'm going downstairs to go ask and see if there's anything wrong. Uh, it, it's just sunlight in a sunless city. It's, it's not normal? No, it's not. Not at all. I feel, I feel like the other one was not normal. You know, not having sun. Not having but sun is not... But I guess for not... this, in this city... In this okay, city, let's... it's normal to not have the sun for a number of reasons. And if there is sun, then well, who, who do we who, would he, who do we talk to about it? Like, what what who made the the twilight eternal twilight happen in the first place? Maybe it's... they. Don't... I'm not going to go that far. I just I just need to get a newspaper or something or talk to someone downstairs to see if someone has an idea of what's going on. All right, let's go. Let's, oh, let's see. Okay. I didn't mean to drag you all out. But... All right. And I mean, trouble seems it's best to sort of there either way. <laughs> trouble seems to sort of follow us around, so I mean, it's yeah. probably something to do with us. <laughs> um, you can kind of see that as you kind of open the end door and make your way down the stairs, you can hear that there's commotion in the lobby, um, and you can get the sense that it is a little bit panicked down there. You can see that there are. Um, first of all, more people than this lobby is meant to handle. There's like a veritable crowd of people, a lot of uh, drow, a lot of durgar, a lot of people in general, and you can hear that like a lot of them are just like in her, her, like hushed tones talking to each other. What's going on? It's like, why is this happening? And there's also people in not so hushed tones that are not from the city. They're like, we paid extra for a moonlight view, and what do we have but sunlight pouring into our room at at Early, at the early hours of the morning. I mean, we're waking up by sunlight much later in the day than this, you must see. And Elliot's there like, I'm, I'm really sorry to... I, I don't know what's happening either. It's it's not a normal thing in the city for sunlight to just appear. Uh, I, I Would you... Can I do anything? Is there any... It's like, we would like a comp on the room, I please. think Azram would intercept their conversation and be like, do you think he controls the sun? <laughs> um, Why would he comp your room? Do you think he controls the sun? You can see that this, like... Uh, this kind of thin <laughs> old man um, in in these very like silk pajamas oh is there and he just oh kind of looks Jesus at you and he's like how about you read the room and see that there's some sort of crisis going go draw your curtains and go back to sleep well, I never <laughs> this, is, this is kind of like come Marion let's, let's up to the room <laughs> see, kind of stomps yeah, get your up old ass like, out of here you didn't thank you <laughs> sorry it's, things are a little crazy right now. Yeah, well, what's happening? I don't know. I, I, around, 
an hour ago the sun rose, and and no one is entirely sure that the, the everyone in the streets, anyone who has sunlight sensitivity, like they they had to come inside, and so we're just giving them a bit of shelter at the moment, but. We're 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 trying to control things. So I'm very sorry if the the moonlight suite isn't no. isn't turning no, no, out. No, it's, it's all right. Dream. Please, it's all right. We don't care that much. Um, Ladar's gonna try to like go outside and see and see if it is really the sun that's out. You uh, step through as Deville sits down. It's like, do you have no idea? And uh, it's like, I don't know. I've never, I don't know. You, you, the sun is never. And then, then as you kind of step out of the inn. Um, you see people kind of retreating from the windows a little bit then as Claudia is going around drawing the curtain or like has the curtains drawn and is like making sure that any like cracks where light is going in are like being like taped down almost mm-hmm. um, as you exit out uh, you can see that the sky is full of light but the source of it is There's kind no of unclear um it's coming from a direction, but you can't see, like, the sun. Um, make a survival check. Fourteen. This feels somewhat sourceless. There just seems to be so much light that it's, like, even some alleyways are, like, that would be shaded are, like, it seems like it's coming, like, straight down on top as if it's the noon sun. You know, like, in like in Hawaii, sometimes it'll, like, the sun will be so directly overhead that it, like doesn't cast any shadows. Wow. Exactly. In and this so it moment, looks like it looks yeah. like crazy. In this moment, like the sun is directly overhead and like even in alleyways everything, it looks like there's just nothing is casting a shadow except for like what's right beneath you. And you can see now that you're outside that there are some stalls and stuff where like people are literally like, crammed under. And like sunlight sensitivity isn't this debilitating thing where like they can't go outside at all if the sun is out. But like if you've lived in a sunless city for all of your life and all of a sudden this powerful of light is shining down on top of you, it's like it's incredibly uncomfortable, if not painful. And so there's a bunch of people that are like crowded underneath like verandas and into st- under stalls. Huh. Like if buildings are being like opening their doors to like let people in that are, have this sensitivity to sunlight. As the streets are empty, and your suspicions are correct, they're empty because people are hiding from this light. Oh God, this is not good. Yeah, that doesn't look good. What uh, is it? What is it? Sorry, good. I was just going to say, Azram would probably come outside and join you guys as well. Um, I want to know if it feels like sunlight. Like, is it warm like sunlight is? Does it feel like I'm basking in, like, sunbathing right now? Or does it just, is it really bright? It's warm at first. And then it's just hot. Like, Mm. uncomfortably so. It's like the sun shining directly on you. And, like, like, Like the more you think about it, yeah, it's more like a spotlight. That is just, like... Mm. burning on Oof. top of like your skin not like hurting you mm-hmm. but just so uncomfortable Getting that it's summer. like even for people without sunlight sensitivity this light is like harsh tense mm. and harsh is uh, how's the temple look from here can we see it because that's where the light was coming from right uh the, the yeah the temple of the fractured mother you can't see the glow of the moon you can't see the colors of it mm. at all like the like this is the first time that the district hasn't been tinted by blue or like any of the tints of any of the districts you can't see the divide between them you just see like all of it washed away as it is so overpowering you hear above like the flapping of wings and you can see that there are like um uh Irokokra, that of the of the uh CCG, the Centralized Carriers Guild, that are, like, you can see them, like, dropping, like, uh, little, like, uh, bundles of newspaper that, like, feather fall as they get closer to the ground oh. and then just kind of, like, like land in, like, baskets outside of people's houses um, as you are seeing, like, all of these all over the city, like, these air cook are, like, delivering these newspapers. Grabbing the first one I see. We are open that shit up. Yeah. What does it say? The headline is, Two Sides of the Same Sword, Stand Off in the Temple District. And as you begin to read, the gist of the article as you're reading it is that early in the morning, about an hour ago, clerics of the Morning Lord casted powerful daylight spells 
in every district of the city. It's always fucking them. It's always them. God. And they're doing it in preparation for the sainthood ritual yeah. that is meant to happen at the Temple of the Morning Lord in the Temple District. But that this goes directly against their agreement with the Church of the Mother Night, who said that they could only cast daylight inside of the Temple of the Morning Lord for this. That they that they were to keep the daylight as contained as possible inside of the temple, and this goes wildly against that. And then you can see that, you know, they have pictures, like f- photographs from this scene that uh, the Lunar Quartet is going to respond oh. during the procession of Bishop Pandora. Oh no. And you can see that there are pictures of the procession, which is like knights in, in black and white, knights that are leading like this uh, this ornamented beautiful carriage that the photograph doesn't do much justice um, uh, through the city. And you can see that there are crowds of people, the people that don't have sunlight sensitivity or people that do and are covered up like with parasols and stuff. Like, like there's like a line of guards trying to keep them back to not start anything. And then knights that are also like like marching alongside with like hands on hilts on their swords to like oh put d- d- as a display of force that this is happening right now in the temple district. Does anybody know anything about like historically? Did, do we know anything about that ascension? Like I know we read about it, but do we like any of us have like background knowledge about that? Make a religion check. Oh, I got a natural one, so I don't even know why I switch dice in movies. <laughs> no. Uh, sixteen for me. Three. Five. Damn. It's a very unfamiliar ritual. It's not really one that you hear much about. You know, sainthood, in terms of the most basic understanding of it, it's big. It's some mm. kind of really big title. It must be. To become a saint of the Church of the Morning Lord, this person must have done something quite enormous for them. Um, right. You know, just the title of it. Like, when was the last time you heard of someone like, oh, there, there's a new saint, <laughs> by the yeah. way. Yeah, they must have lived, like, a really books. wild life. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're not, and if you're not, like, part of the Church of the Morning Lord, the chances of you hearing about something like that is, okay. like, is even smaller. Very small. Okay. You flip through the pages and you can see that there are more pictures of the scene. Um, you see that there actually is, like, a small interview with Elizabeth. Um <gasps> who says, I plan to stop the procession. It's like the, the people of the, that, that says, like, the, the callous attitude of the Church of the Morning Lord is endangering the lives of people in the Temple of the Fractured Mother. The moonlight of the Fractured Mother does not function if the daylight overpowers it so, and people are dying. Oh like, Go people are six. suffering in here. And it's like, I will put a stop to this. And that you know that that it sounds like she's about to, like, make a stand oh over there in Elizabeth. the Temple District. And you get more pictures of the procession of the knights of Bishop Pandora. You see that tensions are rising mm-hmm. in the Temple District. Very intensely. You gotta get there. Um, Ladara, um kind of freezes for a moment and immediately starts walking in the direction of the temple. What, what, wait, 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 hold on. What, what, what are you, what are you doing? This is, I have my suspicions of who is there. Okay. We need to get over there. All, All right. Is it? It's not good. Should we take a snail? It's faster. Deville! <laughs> Deville, Deville! Uh, what yes. is the fastest way? She looks determined. What is the fastest way we can get to the temple right now? Me. Okay. <laughs> she says, he starts uh, running over to where all the snails are parking. You're like, if the snails could make the sound. <laughs> like a skirt as the snail One more. Are like, okay, do we have everyone? Instead, it's like a... Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Everyone is gathered. We get on the sound card. Yeah, we're like, she's like, we're going now. Hold on, everyone. I, I gather Renee into my arms. I'm like, please do. We're like, I want us here. <laughs> I'm good. I'm all right. 
Oh, bitches! <laughs> As DeVille takes off and you are speeding through the streets. It's not hard to do now that there's no one in the streets currently, but you whip around onto the snail way and you can see the extent of it throughout the city as the closer you get to the temple district, the more populous of people are gathered as people are marching through the streets outraged um, on their way to the temple district to the point that as you kind of pull in, Deville has to slow down in order not to, like, hit people. She's go- jumping off. Ladar, oh, is it someone we know? Uh, <laughs> all right. As Ladara, you disappear into the crowd. Oh, just God. without She's a, determined. As She's without a word, Alana is off, too, and trying to, like, push through. She's like, Ladara, w- wait. As you are all making your way, what do you two do as you are kind of I, still there? It's, it's, like, it's going to take me a long time to find parking. <laughs> I'll, I'll gently get Renair down. Is this like the last thing Renee remembered too? Didn't he like last yeah, time exactly. the car? He like passed exactly. out. Exactly. Like, he, he was like, the, <laughs> that's why Vincent's like, please don't fall off. Because the last time I, he almost fucking did. He got to Lunastra, got on the snail, passed out, woke up. On the <laughs> snail, woke up later. Literally. Oh, God. Um, are there like, uh, like street lights? Like, do they have like, street light type things in the streets or like any sort of like a bunch of like signs or anything like that they have street lights they have uh signs uh, they they have street lights that illuminate the streets at night um to some extent um or at night mm-hmm. at the normal like amount yeah. of darkness that there is um what are you looking for in particular uh azram is gonna want to try to get closer by um he's gonna like tarzan that shit and grab his whip <laughs> and start swinging yeah. through the street lights Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and make, a, make like a spell check for me. So charisma, plus charisma. I guess it's augment almost. Or are you just using your whip, no magic? Um, Honestly, he was just going to use his whip. Oh, shit, then uh, acrobatics check. Wow. So I'm like... Uh, 11. 11. You begin to kind of swing above people and are able to do this. And around like the third or so streetlight, you're like kind of losing momentum. And then like you're like above everyone, like swinging. And then they're like, What are you? <laughs> they're all like, They're all like, Down with the. And then they're looking up, and, like confused. As you're like, I'm trying to. <laughs> Can he try doing it with magic? Is yeah, go ahead and check now. Now that you, the whip works out for like the first two surprisingly well. <laughs> then the third one, you're like, I'm just kind of dangling right now, currently. Oh, Spider Man. Sounds worse somehow. Um, plus my augment is fine. Oogie. Or astral hook is a cantrip, actually. Astral hook works. The problem with astral hook is I can only cast it once a day, right? And it's yeah. like one. I don't want to use it yet. Okay. Just in case. Okay. I never know. Okay. <laughs> Um, augment, you said? Augment. Uh, eight. It's slower than you expected. It's not a way that you've really used your whip a bunch before, and you're like, huh, I really thought this would go a lot smoother, as you're just kind of swinging, and you're like, hold on, let me get it up for another minute. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Ladara, master of blending into crowds and getting away on foot is slinking through the crowds like easily making her way through and through and through um you can hear the incensed talk of people that are rightfully upset of people that are angry at the fact that like the the citizens their neighbors that they share this city with are now forced inside and just because of the one one institution thought that their ritual was more important than literally everyone else in the city. Um, you're not focused on that. Right As you push your way through Vincent Renner, you get down and kind of We're begin trying. your ways through the crowd. Um, if it's not working out, then, you know, park it on the snail. No, I'll find a way to get through it. Um... You all are pushing through the crowd at different paces. Ladara trying to make your way through to the center where you can hear the most commotion is happening. People are chanting. Um, people are, are chanting to... to um, like, it's accelerated to the point where it's like, down with the morning lord. Like, at first it was probably like, turn off Hell the yeah. light. But Woo! now it's like, down with the <laughs> entire church. Mm-hmm. Like, people have like improvised signs. People are are 
ye- like chanting and angry at the front of this line. You can see that the the people like holding them back are Lunastra city guards who are like not entirely sure what to do with the situation mm-hmm. because they have a stake in not <laughs> they're not being a massive brawl between knights and citizen. Um, but you get sort of towards the front, and you can see that much further down the line. <laughs> Uh, you can see, like, the carriage being pulled. Like, it's probably, like, at this point, with your perceptive, like, just passive perception, like, quarter mile or so down uh, the way, already making its way, the carriage is stopped that way. Um, Vincent Azram, you are making your way, and you're trying to kind of see, from your perspective as you're swinging through, it does give you a good vantage point to see where that carriage is as well and that it's completely stopped and that there seems to be some sort of confrontation happening like a oh, quarter of no. a mile of a way down. And then Vincent Renner, what do you do? Um, is there, like, I know that there's, like, the crowd congregation. Are there any, like, side roads that I could get, like, around it into, like, a place where I can see better that are less people? Survival check. Okay. With disadvantage because there is so much happening that it's... it's Probably over something. But I, I think Renair will also do this as well. We'll do this check. And he doesn't have disadvantage on this one. I got a win. <laughs> you got a win? No. No. It was a seven and then it was a one. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Vincent's starting to get a little. Well, he's already anxious because he knows that Elizabeth's putting herself in danger. You're in danger. Wow, wow. Oh, uh, 30 20. Ooh. Um, oh, Renair. Renair notices that you're getting overwhelmed and just kind of grabs your hand tight not grabs your hand but like finds your hand mm-hmm. squeezes it tightly he's like looks on me um let's go and begins to like use his sense of being back in a city Renair is like the most used to traversing a city mm-hmm. um and though it's not as good as DeVille who's lived here before he's pretty good at finding the back ways where people are not using and getting you through to the point that um you're like Closer to where Ladara is okay. in this situation. Okay, I wanna I wanna keep eyes on Ladara because she seems really upset and he doesn't <laughs> know why, and so he's he's trying to keep eyes on her and get a view of what's going on. So just role playing wise, I'm gonna say this word and I don't want to scare you. Initiative here. Okay. Ladara, Vincent, Azra, in okay. terms of how close you are. And okay. How you're okay. going to arrive to this cool. scene. Cool. Ladara, you're the first one as the guards are creating this human sort of barricade, like with their arms, just kind of holding back people who are keeping a good distance from them. They're not like bumping up against the guards or shoving them or something like that. They're literally just like like shouting mm-hmm. past them to get to the knights as you start to see this. There's not like the small progression of them. They're the morning lord. The church showed up for this. There is like... There are, like, priests and clerics that are there that have, like, their own, like, holy books raised and are looking, like, like dead-eyeing the crowd. And there are, like, oh knights God. that have, like, like hand on hilt. And there's, like, lines of them and such. All, like, as you get closer and closer, you can see that, like, the security detail on this event, they knew what was going to happen was going to cause a problem. Oh as you get closer and you see this and you're making your way through the crowd, what are you doing? Um, she's looking for that mask. Okay. She's directly looking for that mask. You are looking to see into the carriage in any way. You're looking towards the carriage. It's the most likely place that they would be. As you're trying to peek inside, there's no windows or anything on it. It's this highly ornamented, beautiful carriage with golden ornament and sun designs all across it, um, pulled by armored horses and... Um, and piloted by a priest of the of the Morning Lord, um, but you don't see that mask anywhere on the outside. You know that whoever is there is inside of this carriage. Okay. <clears throat> um, How close am I to the carriage? You are at this point probably like sixty feet away. And there's like guards. There are guards that are Lunastra city guards that are the first line of defense trying to keep people back and keep up this sort of path that this par- uh, like carriage is taking its way through. And then there are knights that are like standing by the carriage, like spears, halberds, swords that are just like all like providing heavy security. And the carriage is stopped, you said? The carriage is stopped by okay. not their own choice from what okay. you can tell. 
Um, She's gonna. So am I like as close as I can get without being past the guards? Currently, yes. You're, you're, yeah, you're like still in the crowd, but yeah, they've created some distance between like the crowd and the carriage. Can she see the commotion that is happening while the carriage is stopped? Uh, yeah, make a perception check. This will be your action for this turn. Is getting a lay of the situation. Perception, yeah, is is probably best for this. Like a thirty-one. <laughs> yes. Whatever nineteen plus twelve is. Your ability to assess threats and everything that is happening in a situation all at once in the most panicked of situations. Though it worked very well for assassinations, it works well here as well as you are suddenly very, you, you make yourself aware. You cut out all of the noise around you, everyone shouting all at once, and you assess the key players in this situation in a moment. Like you know who is a threat and who's not. Church of the Morning Lord is stopped. You can see that the knights are backing up priests who are negotiating and arguing towards, as you get a better view of them, the Church of the Mother, led by Elizabeth. You can see that knights of that church wearing silvery armor um, and um, with their sort of pale, loose uh, clothing and sort of their darker garb in some places, like, are tense with weapons ready. And you can hear that around you there is... The conflict has started there. Elizabeth is... Elizabeth is very, like, passionately, like, digging into this priest as she speaks on about how the people in the church, like, your actions will kill people, Mm. will harm those that are in need. The fractured mother is not one to be trifled with, and to think that the morning lord can swing his weight around... Let's go, It's impudent in my city. And this basically is like this, and the priest... That is there. You don't recognize Surprise these people, but um, the priest is there, sort of older man with a more sallow face and very ornamented golden and white garb. Is like, I bid Lunastra learn its place in these affairs. May I remind them that it is by the Church of the Morning Lord that they are free to practice this heretical religion as the as um, Elizabeth is trying to keep her cool but is just like very upset Um, but yeah this this is your turn for now Vincent you approach on the situation and you can hear the very uh, passionate argument that is happening As you hear, now step aside before the knights make you. Oh my god. Uh, can I? I'm gonna message Ladara. Yep. I'm gonna message Ladara, and I'll be like, "What? What is happening? What? Who? Who's in there? Like, what's what's going on? Do you need me to do something? Do you need to to to, to see into the the, the, the carriage? I, I don't know what you want me to do. Can I? I can respond. Yep. I need to get whoever's in that carriage out of the carriage and I need to talk to them. That's what needs to happen first. <laughs> She's like, like, my one track mind, like on a mission, like. Okay, so. So so get the person out of the carriage. That's the goal. Okay. All right. I could try to scry into the thing, into the carriage. If you'd let yeah. me do that, I mean, let me try. It's a it's location, right? It is uh, clairvoyance, it's invisible sensor within a location that is unfamiliar and obvious or familiar. unfamiliar and obvious is yeah. there any like line of sight that needs to happen um uh, an obvious location that is uh, unfamiliar to you such as behind a door around a corner in a grove of trees perfect yeah. all right you so, cast clairvoyance and i will do it with sight perfect you cast clairvoyance on the inside, picturing the inside of the velvet carriage, trying to see who is in there. You get an image in your mind's eye as you are seeing the knights in their armor, all crowded. You see that there are some 
that look far more battle-hardened and far more um, stern. There would be tough customers to deal with. And you can also see that there is like a figure seated inside of the carriage, smaller figure. Um, they are wearing these like highly ornamented robes, um, and they are their stance is very into themselves right now. Um, and they currently, you can see that their face is like covered by a mask. Um, not the mask, right? Not the mask. No. Okay. <laughs> by a mask. Okay. Um, with their hair that is like tucked into like a like a hood almost okay. as they just kind of sit um patiently um hmm? who, who, is that figure specifically familiar to me i don't think so okay whatever what what is like do they have like are they an elf human skin color hair color uh make a perception check it's okay A lot of their features are very, very hidden for for a number of reasons. It's very hard to get much about them. Make good Arcana check. That's better. That's a 28. 28. Oh, I get a whisper. Oh, God. Okay. And I mean, if you'll allow me, I would. You can love share to, it if you'd like. Yeah, share that. It's I mean, with you. whoever it, I I am able to, Lidar oh, first, Lidar. and I'll inform Azram about what mm-hmm. I saw in there. Okay. <laughs> oh, of like the the person. Yeah, I'm like, there's yeah. a person. Okay, okay, I couldn't okay, really okay. see what they like. Something something's yeah. a little off in there, but I can't tell what it is. Okay, cool. Okay. But I did I didn't know who it was. Okay. That's your action. Uh, then That's to Azram. Um, we'll say that Vincent is able to see you swinging from the. <laughs> Tops of the of the Azra light never poles. makes himself in- inconspicuous. <laughs> and the, the other people are noticing you doing this, but they're not immediately thinking that you're doing something. I mean, they're just thinking that you're you're being uh, Oops, perhaps a bit of an instigator in this, but not in the bit that they're going to start fighting you. Um, but you hear the situation from Vincent. So, the cart is our goal. I like look at him from around the corner, and I'm like. Big thumbs up. <laughs> yes, you're all. You, yes, correct. And Asrin's like, all right. And he, oh God, Jesus, um, <gasps> he's gonna try to swing and land on top of the cart. Here we oh go. Oh Jesus. This is a big. Make a augment check. This is with magic to to kind of augment. I see him start to do that. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, <little laughs> forward. I have five gray hairs. Honestly, the dark would probably be like. Oh God, that's not. That's not. <laughs> you said so the many car other was things. the goal. <laughs> not to get on top of it. I'm like, yes, no. <laughs> but I was like, I have a plan, and what oh did you God, get? I'm gonna fucking die. <gasps> I got a natural one. Yep. Oh. yep. Yep. They did. Oh Here's what's gonna happen. It's plus five. You swing. <laughs> Towards the cart, and I will. I'm gonna say this for the purpose of storytelling: you make it. Now, a matter of whether you stick the landing. <laughs> You make it to the cart as you swing and this, the cart is shaken. This, you, your vision is shaken from the inside as the knights are like this. And you can hear like yelling oh around you. I imagine like this whole scene, riot. People, are, tensions are rising. There's a lot of noise. People are angry. All of a sudden, this random dude just flies out of nowhere. It's the son of the cart. And everybody's quiet. just like. <laughs> he likes uh, like, you, you take oh uh, 12 points right? of bludgeoning damage okay as you are hit the ground or prone and everyone is mostly confused <laughs> by this display as the knights just oh you kind of hear like <laughs> as everyone is like uh halt <laughs> as, as they're uh as the guards are suddenly like their attention is focused because someone jumped over them and now the knights are focused because there's somebody that 
swang into the cart, and even though they're confused for a second, they're like going for blades to like to like stop you. I don't think they're going to go and attack you, but currently they're going to restrain you. Can I message Ladar very quickly yes. and just say distraction, and I'll I'll run out and I'll be like, oh sorry, sorry about this one. Uh, he is uh, he is trying out a new form of acrobatics. Uh, this is just the wrong place and the wrong time. I look at Ladara. <laughs> Make a deception check with disadvantage. I'm, I'm like, we can handle this. Ladara, get in there. The knights are at first <clears throat> making their way, shield and sword in hand, towards Azram, and then as you run out and get behind him, like, there were already guards nearby the cart that were probably congregated more towards the front just because they're the commotion in front, but now they're all, like, congregating to the sides, and you're finding yourself slowly starting to be surrounded as they kind of hold shield and sword towards you all. You can see them, like, light up with, like, divine smites as they're seeing this situation begin to escalate. 22. I'm like, he's a circus performer. This was, it was just set up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Ezra, come on, get up. Come on, buddy. So you are being kind of pulled up off of the ground. As they're doing this, Ladar is going to um, try to get into the cart. Stealth check. That's Major stealth doing. check. No advantage because this situation is very disadvantageous in terms of, like, there's not a lot to cover you here, except for the fact that there's this distraction. I didn't realize my stealth was plus 14. So it's a 24. 24. Odar, you immediately start trying to find blind spots, making your way through. As people are focused on what's happening in front, and there are guards focused on what's happening in the back, you're able to just kind of, as people are starting to get closer to the guards, you're like, back, back, please, please. The situation is not safe. As you kind of use that to get through the barricade a little bit, um, making your way over towards the cart, um, no one seems to take notice at this current moment. You get up alongside the other side of the cart, trying to be able to sneak around, um, and to the side that Vincent, uh, Vincent and Azram are not on. As you stand to your feet, Azram, what do you do? Azram's gonna, like, look at all of them, and he's gonna have, like, eldritch energy, like, crackling in his hands, and he's gonna be like, turn the fuck! Off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, no. that's the name of the show is turn the lights off <laughs> 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 um, you mean to threaten a night of the morning oh Lord. no you can see that they're starting to gather and like surround you on one side of the cart um as people are getting very, very agitated, seeing this happen, all of a sudden the crowd is very focused. Whether it's good or bad, it's a powder keg and it needs a spark. Mm. As they kind of turn towards you, Azrim. Wouldn't be the first time I did. Wait, Azrim. Auna is Auna's breaking his way through the crowd. He, he, he's trying to slink through and make his way. He's going to show up a little bit later than everyone else. Um, you hear one of those pieces. I recognize that face. <gasps> they're, they're, they're sovereignty heroes, oh. the ones from Weldon. Ooh, as they're oh, sort of... No. They're, they're the ones that summon the demons upon Weldon. Oh, okay. As they're sort of pointing. Heretics. What? That... You know. that First of all, not true at all. Uh, completely false. <laughs> it's like, um, actually, I, 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 I would actually happened. disagree with that. Is it the, the you say is you're like, <laughs> but uh, the, the, we we were just leaving, right? Azram's still like Elder Jinji crackling. He's preparing a spell. <laughs> He's like thinking it. <laughs> He's like, what? Let me out him. <laughs> God, I don't even know what to do with the situation. We um, really got ourselves into some shit here. Vincent, it's not looking like there's not much talking your way out of here yeah. currently. In this situation. It seems pretty bad. This situation, not that it's bad, you are very powerful. But I will say that the situation here is escalating um, to the point that you'll, you're going to have to make a choice on whether you are running or whether you are standing your ground. 
or at least giving Riladara enough time to do what she has to do. Uh, balancing act between, I want Ladara to do what she's got to do, but I also don't want all these people, all these like civilians to get hurt. Yeah. I actually have to roll to see how negotiations are going. Okay. No Jenga this time. <laughs> As you are sort of being approached, um, you hear this kind of like, <laughs> and you hear like gasps. From the crowd, um, as you see over the shoulders of the knights, um, you see Elizabeth holding her like chest Uh -uh. as there's like light crackling off of it. And from the other perspectives, um, they see the head priest of the Morning Lord with his arm out extended, saying, That was a warning. Step back. Priestess. Leave her alone. What are you doing? And he looks over his shoulder and turns to you. Heretics. see a high priest of the morning lord turn to dust and from the crowd you see a weak and heaving Rosanov stepping through the as fuck? the headmistress oh of the magus academy murders a high just priest kill somebody so- as everyone is stunned at this, as she runs to her daughter's side, Elizabeth, are you okay? Is everything all right? What oh, the fuck? <laughs> and she stands up as every all knights are now turned away from you and are drawing their swords. Ladara, it's your act. She's getting in the car. Holy shit. He just killed somebody. You open the door of the car. You know that there are guards inside. You know that they are going to stay and be in there when you open it, but this next move is critical. As you open the door, and there's shock from every knight that is sitting there. As they go to draw swords, as they go to ca- start casting magic, all you do is make eye contact with Bishop Pandora. And you see crystal blue eyes look towards you that widen and water. Oh my god. Oh my god. And beneath that mask, you know there is a smile that could part (gasps) the clouds.
Hey there, gamers. It's me, Christian, with the break. Thank you for listening to the season finale of Moonlighters. That's right. This is the final episode of season two. Thank you for sticking with us through this wild ride that has been Moonlighters. Uh, We really love it, and I am very proud of how it's turned out, uh, and I'm very excited for what's coming next. One point of order... After this season, the Strings of Fate will be taking a recording hiatus for a few months. Uh, This is due to me needing some time to fully write the next arc and get everything together. But at the same time, I got my own personal things going on. I'm applying to graduate school of kind. This also acts as a longer break for the cast to recharge after this season so that we can focus on our full-time jobs and our personal things as well. We took a look and realized that the longest break that we'd ever had intentionally was probably like two or three weeks long. So we wanted to take steps towards preventing burnout and having a healthy, fun relationship with the show. Now, we still will be having content coming out in the next few months. So we'll have soft talks. We'll have uh, possibly the end of the Bonnie one shot as well. Uh, Just no regular episodes. So take this time to catch up if you aren't already, which if you're listening to this, you are. (laughs) Talk about the show, show the show to your friends, etc. And thank you for listening and for understanding. On to the break business. This show is sponsored by Dungeon Depths, your one-stop shop for quality gaming supplies with character. Olivia from Dungeon Depths is a wonderful individual and they run an amazing shop and they help us with giveaways. Right now, you can go to shopdungeondeps.com and use the code SOFTPOD, S-O-F-P-O-D, at checkout for 10% off of your order. Please go show them support. They have been an amazing sponsor throughout seasons one and two, and we hope to continue with a long partnership going forward. Thank you, Dungeon Depths, and thank you, Olivia. This show is also sponsored by Roll20, a virtual tabletop that helps you connect with your friends online to play virtual tabletop games. You can check them out at Roll20.net. Finally, this show is sponsored by you, the viewer. Our Patreon helps us to keep the show up and running as it helps us pay for fees. It helps us pay Carissa, who helps us with our social media. We don't make enough to pay ourselves, but we do make enough to upgrade different parts of the show. So it helps us with equipment and furniture for the studio that we're renting, as well as the rent for the studio that we're renting. I want to take a moment to thank everyone for supporting us through seasons one and two. We're still going to be putting out Patreon content during the hiatus, so please stay subscribed, and if you aren't already, go check it out. Our final Patreon shout-out for season two goes out to... Kylie, Marland, Morgan, Shala, Remy, Emily, Devin, Rhett, Essek, Amy, Anna, and Starry Spells. Thank you all for being supporters of our Patreon at the $10 Honorary Bard tier. And I think that's it for the break. Thank you again for supporting us for season two. We've grown a lot this season as we've learned new things about audio editing and, you know, sponsorships and Patreon things. And it's been a wild, wild ride the entire time, but we made it out the other end. So, Enjoy the rest of the episode, and we'll see you soon. Bye! In order to understand what happens next, we need to go back. There was somebody that was supposed to see you all during Lantern Night, but never did. Dresden spent his night alone, fulfilling his promise to survey the Temple of the Fractured Mother. He watched over Rosenob as she spent the night with her daughter, watching her at the event. He surveilled the Temple of the Fractured Mother. He watched Rosanov reunite with her daughter. 
He watched with the fervor in which she held her and the performance from afar and could not help but grit his teeth. But he never strayed from the position once. He watched them the entire night, making sure that even far after it would become apparent that Rosanov was not going to try anything, he kept himself there by himself, the occasional check-in with the member of the Riders of Fate. And he was content to do so. Spend the night alone. The parade of moonlight jellies came and went. The night went on without complication. His thoughts strayed to what you all were doing, who you all were with. happy you all were probably but he never moved it was until the hairs on the back of his neck stood tall shot up from his spot, his thoughts collecting, his frustration. Growing throughout the events of the night, he messaged Elise, I'll be back. He knew exactly where to go after that. He could feel their presence moving. Draconic eyes, he traded away a piece of eternity for a lit, a path in front of him into a store meant to be closed where the shopkeep already lied dead in the passageway beneath lied open. He trudged sewers, following every arcane glyph until the smell of waste turned into the smell of iron. the entire time not knowing entirely why. (sighs) Was this an opportune time to strike? Or was this just blowing off steam? They stand at the end of the hallway, wreathed in shadow and pearlescent distortion at their feet, the bodies of a dozen merriment soldiers, broken and bloodied beyond recognition, along with how many other civilians just trying to get through the witchwood tree that night. The hand of persuasion speaks. Ah, it seems our friend has found me. Then all is as it should be, and I will be taking my leave, my lord. They turn, a streak of distortion still crackling in their hand, alone at the end of the hallway. Jason says nothing. fire roars to life in his hand. Neither says a word to the other as they are framed by the enormous witchwood tree. And this ensuing fight would go on for hours beneath the city. completely locked in combat, equal in ability. 
but by the end of their duel they are both weary and wounded as the hand of persuasion is missing an arm. Dresden, a gaping hole in his side, patched temporarily with dragon scales. He stands over his foe, his superior in Invictus Tongue, who rests against the bark of the tree. (sighs) Blood trickles out of their mouth. So he was right. Their chest rising weakly as they choke out the words. Certainly did put up a fire, Mr. Dalier. Dresden raises an arm, a spell roaring to life. You say that as though I've lost. His arms raised towards him, scales covering the exposed skin until Dresden's hand is reminiscent of a dragon's maw. Unfortunately, the hand smiles. You have. In an instant, they reach out, the flesh on their hands searing against the scales as they pull the arm down and into the witchwood tree, the spell already leaving Dresden's hand. What are you... <clears throat> witchwood bark consumed by draconic flame. Dara, the moment you lay eyes on her, the moment you feel the weight of those crystal blue eyes, there's a tightness in your chest. An outpouring of emotion welling up deep inside of you, guilt laying dormant since you left her all those years ago. What do you do? For a moment, She's frozen. And as it starts to sink in, her eyes just well up with tears. Her breath is as shaky as ever. rising from this space as they are moving towards you, you don't even 
even go for a dagger. You just... It's hard to look away. And from her perspective, she sees you there, wreathed in flowers as they bloom from your hair and down your body. You share this moment in time as though serendipity has granted you a small gift. Find me, the Arboretum. Before things move all at once. Rhaenyra has tried to push past the guards as soon as you darted out there too get by Asram's side waiting for the right moment to strike knowing that diving in would only was work to get you or his friend or somebody hurt Alana pushes past the crowd desperately breathing looking looking for any of you finally seeing you all surrounded and drawing his quarterstaff to burst through and leap into battle as Rosanov holds her daughter at the front of the crowd as the knights charge and the ground begins to shake. Oh god. Oh no. The people feel as though it's adrenaline, a push to leap forward to charge and fight for their city, to do something. And as they push, they soon notice the sound of crumbling buildings, the sound of shattering glass, as cries of revolution turn into cries of panic as imperfect light shines down on this scene you hear a cacophony of what you can only call noise as the world around you begin to shift you remember what it was like to be in Weldon when the bleed happened but this is not like that. Another world colliding with your own is strange. It fades in, it's slow. This is sudden. This is fast. This is loud. As the Witchwood Market pours from the bark, you watch the Coliseum <laughs> rise from beneath the ground. You watch as the world around you shifts and changes rapidly. And beneath you, you watch the earth split open and pastel light pour over all of you in an instant. And Ladara, that moment is snatched away from you as your sister fades away no. into light no. and somewhere far from here in a chamber of marble and gold she's reaching outward with her hand as clerics pull her down from a platform Ladara's hand is just outstretched and she's frozen for a moment until she kind of realizes the severity of the situation and will just kind of like scramble out and try to find any of her friends as fast as possible. You she's like frantic. 
fall out of the carriage as the knights, the earth splits beneath them and the carriage is swallowed by the earth. You hear the horses cry out in this as they are pulled underneath oh the ground God. as you are walking through the chaos as the city begins to split apart beneath you. Renair pushes through and grabs onto Holly. What are we doing? What the fuck is happening? What's going on? What? Auna pulls you, Lidara, towards Vincent. Renair says, we don't have time. We don't have time. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. We have to go. Where are we going to go? I don't know. Where is that? hot fucking mess right now. She's like sobbing and like breaking simultaneously. She's no help. Do we have everyone here? Okay. Can, All on the side. I, I, I need to go find a villain. Where's, 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 um, I don't know. Can you get her back? Azram's gonna yeah. grab them and try to... He's I've gonna, got her. Okay, Fine. Azram's gonna go. Okay, you split off to go find a is the light coming down from the sky still? Is that still happening? Like, That's still happening at the same time, but you're watching the sky shift from that daylight, oh, and no. it's beginning to change in color. We need to get it's going to oh, no. split and where are we? Where do we, where do we want to go? <laughs> we have to get out of here. Oh, no. I... Uh, is is Rosenoff and Elizabeth on this side? Yeah, yes. Rosenoff is holding on to Elizabeth. Um, and they're trying to figure out what to do, and Elizabeth is like, get off me, I have to help them, I have to help them, as she's watching people, you know, as she's watching people get caught up in this destruction, as we're just like, you can't do this, it's, it's safer, I'll get you to safety. Um, uh, I'm gonna run over there. You run over to both of them, Rosanov looks up at you, and Elizabeth is shocked. Vincent. I don't know what's going on, but this is I, not safe out here. We have to go somewhere else. The people, there. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I know. But what can we do? Do you have anything? Do you, do, do either of you have any idea of what's going on? Or anything to stop it? I don't know. I don't know. If we don't know how to fix it, then we have to get safe. Give me a persuasion check. This is... 30. 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> it was a very high DC, but Rosanov looks. He's right. We have to go. We have to survive. We can help them afterwards. <laughs> Damn it! As Elizabeth is brought to her feet, um, and Azrim, you are rushing towards where the crowd is trampling over each other, trying to run from this district, but it is everywhere. You're watching buildings fold in on themselves and collapse. You are watching trees sprout up from across the city as you are trying to find DeVille as best as you can. Go ahead and make a survival check to start. You can do it. Woo, come on, Nazi. Three. Nice. <laughs> there is sheer panic going through you right now as the world is ending around you and you are pushing through crowds of panicked individuals to just try and find one. Uh, Azram in his panic is just going to grab his necklace and be like, where, where are you? Are you okay? Uh, I'm still- I'm caught in the crowds. Azrum, Azrum, I'm here. I'm, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. I... Is, did I, is there like any, like, did I notice like, I heard crashing coming from this way that corresponded with the crashing that I heard from? It's not crashing. There's something happening between the connection as you are... You are caught in the crowd trying to hear a single word that's popping into your mind and the words aren't coming through clearly. The last thing you hear is, wait for me, please. As the crowd swarm around you and as the light above you is consumed by a rush of purple going upward,
All the noise rises to a fevered pitch into silence. Vincent, you are the first to blink your eyes. Awake. After the crash. You feel your heart beating in your ears, in your chest, as you are... The world around you is blurred in shapes of twos and threes that are all coming slowly together to make a clear image of what you are seeing as you rise (coughs) off of the cobblestone street of Lunastra. I uh, immediately go for my friends, for Renair and for Ladara. Renair, Ladara. Alan, Alan is gone, right? Alan and Azram, you can't see them currently. But you've been to shake them as you all feel uh, that same <coughs> vision, that ringing in your ears. Please, please be okay. Please be okay. Are you all right? Please. <sighs> please wake up. And do I wake up? <laughs> or like, you or do I... wake up. Okay, good. Thank God. Thank you. Where? What happened? It's <sighs> it. <laughs> you like collapsed on the crown. <laughs> Uh, was it was on it was it was Azra. I don't know. I don't know. You take a moment as you can focus only on each other. And the world around you begins to make itself apparent. You see what was once the temple district of Lunastra scattered in debris, shattered, spread across a forest of quartz, of overwhelming flora, the grass beneath you, that your chunk of Lunastra is embedded in, is vibrant. It shifts in hues and colors, and the sky above you is not filled with light, nor darkness, nor orange twilight. It is purple. A deep and unnatural purple. Azram, you awake last. Auna is laid next to you as you both (laughs) come to consciousness. Hearing your friend Vincent in the distance crying off. I will start yelling for you. (laughs) (laughs) If uh, Azram's going to get up and immediately just start looking around what's going on, who's around him. He's going to see if Auna's okay. Auna. Are you all right? Are you all right? I'm fine. Nothing a little rest won't help. I think I'm fine, too. Did, uh, you didn't see DeVille, did you? No. I'm sorry. Uh, I, got, I, gotta, I gotta go look for him. Just wait, wait a moment. Wait for what? Our friends, they, uh, they're here somewhere. Let them know you're okay before we go. 
and now and is lost for words as he looks around as he looks at enormous formations of quartz crystal in this pale white and gold that the light fracks through them you all are stood and awake the door is probably gonna like does she see, like, as or Renana? Can she see them from where they Pass are? Pass perception, I'll see you can. She's gonna, like, run over there <laughs> to where they are. You have to leap off of this huge chunk of the city and into the grass, which shifts colors like water, just ripples of water. As you begin to run towards them, As Asram, you look onward at where the city once was, only crystalline trees. As Ladara rushes towards you both, as Vincent, Renair tries to comfort you. You find yourselves in a land with many names. There was a time when a world like this was simply known as alien. A place between a mirror of the prime material plane Those scholars may have called this place the Feywild. It's not entirely accurate. This place is far different now than it ever was when the Fey ruled. You stand within the kingdom of the Ruby Queen. May her refracted rain last long and eternal. 